Greg Brown has spent his life honing and crafting top-notch engine building skills, much of it learned during the 13 years he worked for John Cozzi Racing Engines. It was there that Brown got his first introduction to an engine building and dyno competition called the Engine Masters Challenge. The competition has been run by Hot Rod Magazine for many years, but in 2017 they announced there would be no Engine Masters for 2018. This left an opening for the inaugural Race Engine Challenge organized by Greg Finnegan. The inaugural Race Engine Challenge took place in Charlotte, North Carolina, and featured engine builders from across the United States putting their most creative builds against one another on the dyno. Having had experience in this kind of competition before, Greg Brown felt confident in his abilities to compete. He had left John Cozzi in 2016 to start Hammerhead Performance Engines in Snellville, Georgia. Looking to win the Race Engine Challenge, Brown began building a small block Ford engine with his own variation of Hemi cylinder heads. It's our latest engine of the week. Engine Builders Engine of the Week is sponsored by Pengrade. Precision Performance Pengrade. Always the original green oil. Visit pengrade1.com and L-Ring DOS Original. Sealing the OE and aftermarket with premium gaskets and sealing science for over 140 years. Do the job right and use the best. Visit lring.com and Scat Crankshaft. Everything for your LS engine. Visit scatcrankshafts.com. Hey everyone, I'm Crystal Smith with Engine Builder and today we're talking about hammerhead performance engine build of a small block Ford. What makes this Ford engine unique are Greg's own specially designed Hemi heads, which he created for the high performance streetcar hot rod market. They turned out to be pretty race oriented and made good power. I obviously have a business in selling heads. I, so I wanted to use my own product to help kind of showcase what I do. So it was a, it was a no brainer to build a small block Ford with my Hemi heads on. Just 393 cubic inch uh, small block Ford Hemi. Uh, my very good friend uh, Eric Roycroft also helped me with the engine. Um, and be between he and I, we, you know, and you know, in, in dissecting the rules and, and you know, trying to trying to figure out every last little little thing that would be an advantage, um, we, we chose our parts at that point. One thing Brown knew about the race engine challenge from the engine's master from his previous experience was the competition's grade on a power per cubic inch scale. Your score is a factor that takes into account both your horsepower and cubic inch. The bigger engine you use, the greater the horsepower has to be because of the division of the cubic inch into that number. If, if you look back in, at all the engine masters that there's ever been, um, engines around 400 cubic inches um, will by far um, outnumber any other combination. I, I don't think it's a coincidence. I think it's, you know, the, that, that size engine, the power you can make, and, and, it, and it depends on RPM as well. Armed with that knowledge, Brown knew he wanted to keep his small block Ford somewhere around 400 cubic inches. He came across a 3.9 inch stroke Ford crank, which gave him a 3.93 cubic inch engine with a 4004 inch bore. According to Brown, even just one cubic inch can mean the difference in winning or losing these kinds of competitions. He suggests that you don't really want an engine bigger than you think it needs to be. The rule, uh, the camshaft rule was no bigger than 55 millimeter journals, and, and a regular small block Ford is smaller than that. So we did take the cam tunnel out to 55 millimeter, um, and then we also the the lifter size rule was uh, 904, which is a which is a Chrysler size, technically. Um, so we did take the, the lifters out to uh, to the larger size as well. Ultimately, Brown built his engine to have the best chance of winning the race engine challenge, but to also sell the engine afterward. Therefore, decisions such as the 55 millimeter cam and the 904 lifters were made because they're more enticing to prospective buyers. In sticking with that mentality, Brown used diamond pistons on this build and followed the recommended pistons to wall clearances. As far as main bearing clearances and rod clearances, um, I like I like three thousands on, on both. Um, sometimes it's hard to get there. Sometimes you, you're not able to get there. Um, um, if you run a coated bearing, you can get by with a, a little bit tighter clearance. So say on the main where you're maybe shooting for three thousand, if it if it ended up at you know, 2.6 to 2.8, it would be fine with a coated bearing. That's a little bit tight for us for, for an uncoated bearing, but um, so we, you know, we, we always shoot for 3,000. The rods, um, kind of similar deal. I, I like to see, you know, 2.8 to 3, 
Um, I think the rods ended up just just under. I think they were ended up two two six. Is what we ended up with on the clearance on the rods. According to Brown, the coolest aspect of the short block is it featured a piston guided rod setup. Instead of the big end of the rod keeping the piston straight in the bore, Hammerhead used the piston itself to guide and keep the rod straight on the crank. What it means is, is that the, the small end of the rod will fit somewhat tightly in the piston. So with, 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 with only, you know, five to eight thousandths of side clearance um, uh, of the small end of the rod in the, in the pin boss, area. It, it, it's nicer to have a full round piston because that's just more support um, if you're going to use the piston to, to, to keep, you know, to, to keep all that stuff straight. The least amount you can get away with there, the better ring sail it'll have and the more power it'll make. From there, Brown set his sights on designing and constructing the oil pan, which he got from Moroso. It features a little bit of kick out just under the maximum allowed, is deep to hold a little more oil, and keep it as far away from the rotating assembly as possible. To finish the Hemi cylinder head setup, Brown could use any Windsor 351 intake manifold. However, on a 9-2 inch deck block, the choices for a Windsor intake manifold are slim, so Brown used a 9-5 inch deck Holly high ram. Decided to use that intake and, and to keep from, well for, for two reasons, one to keep from having to, to modify the intake manifold as far as the flange, flanges goes, and, and also to, to because of a, a taller a taller port will also make more power a lot of times um, and, and certainly runs better. Fully assembled, the small block Ford Hemi engine was ready for competition. The race engine challenge was split into two classes, an inline valve class and a canted valve Hemi class, which Brown ran in. The five-day event featured multiple dyno runs per day with the top two engines battling each other on the final day. Each competitor was given an opportunity to make up to 10 dyno runs, with the average of their best three runs giving them their score. Brown's peak numbers were 775 horsepower and 622 pound-feet of torque, and his average horsepower was 642. Those numbers gave Brown the victory. I, mean, I, I went there pretty well feeling like I had as good, if not the best, engine in the contest to win. It doesn't get better than winning um, a competition, especially winning winning the the first first one of its kind. Better than that was it was it was winning it with with a product that I manufacture and sell of my own, not just buying something that someone else sells and and making it work. It's, it's you know ha having my own my own product in the competition and winning with it um, means more than just winning. I think. With his success, Hammerhead Performance Engines has continued to thrive. Well, that does it for this episode of Engine of the Week. Thanks to our sponsors, Pengrade, Scat, Crankshafts, and L-Ring. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have an engine you'd like to see featured, please email our editor, Greg Jones, at gjones at babcox.com. Thanks for watching.